Okay, hi guys. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, the history of the Royal Canadian Army Cadets. We'll just call that the cadets from now on, just to keep our, this video shorter. Um, so we're going to learn about this, the historical events and significant events of the Royal Canadian Army, Army, Army Cadets. And you'll start to see as we go along how they contributed greatly to what the program actually is today. That you, the one you guys are participating in. So, um, it was motivated by the American Civil War and the threat to the Fenian Raids, which was, uh, the Fen it was a Fenian Brotherhood. They were an Irish Republic organization based in the U.S. And they, t they, had, they attacked uh, based attacks against British forts and other targets in Canada in 1866 and again in 1870 and 1871. So their plan was they were going to conquer Canada and then trade Canada back to the Great Britain uh, in, in trade for uh, Irish independence. So uh, the first cadet units were called drill associations. So uh, in those days, drill was not a parade square exercise, but it was a method of maneuvering troops in battle. You've all seen the old movies where they're all marching in, lining up, fire, all that good stuff. Um, so they could have, so in those early drill associations, they could have included members ranging from age 13 to 60. So they weren't really cadet corps, they were auxiliary militia companies. So, um, the, the, the distinction between high school cadets and adult militiamen became clear in 1879 when the Militia General Order 18 authorized the formation of 74 associations for drill and educational act institutions for young men over 14 who were upon no account to be employed in active service. So the cadets provided their own uniforms. So in, in here, they actually have a picture of the Highlanders. Um, so that's a Scottish, Scottish Highlander Corps, and they still, do still exist. They wear the kilts and the Scottish hats, and they have bagpipes. But the cost of that was so great that usually only one member of the family could actually participate because they were importing these uniforms from Scotland. Um... So the oldest, the oldest serving, continually serving cadet corps is number two bishops called school cadet corps in Lennoxville, Quebec. And it was formed in December 6th, 1861. So by 1887, the drill associations had detailed regulations about how they were going to be governing their activities. So arms and other equipment were issued to those schools that agreed to provide military training to the boys to boys over the age of 12. So these schools, they, they supplied accommodations and instructors. Uh, members still supplied their own uniforms. So they got some increased report, and here's a little bit of local history for you guys. Um, it was also motivated by, in part by the campaign against the Northwest Rebellion of 1885. So if you guys don't know your local history, so that was mainly based actually in uh, a huge chunk of that was based in Battleford. You have Fort Battleford, the park there. Maybe we should all go check that out one day. Um, so Fort Battleford was the capital of the Northwest Territories and it was built in 1876. Um, it was strategic because of the ford in the Battle River. Anybody ever guess where the term Battleford came from? Um, so it was instrumental in... Uh, the uh, Battle of Cutknife Hill and the Siege of, ba of Fort Battleford. Uh, and that was in 1885. So there's a little bit of local history for you guys. Um, so the term Cadet Corps officially appeared for the first time in Ontario in, 19, in 1898. Um, so, fun fact. So with a provision that the Corps instructors would be members of the school teaching staff instead of an instructor from the local militia unit. So that's where they started hiring guys like me, civilian instructors, except we had to be teachers back then. So, and in 1889, uh, the first authorized cadet corps were attached to militia units, limiting membership to young men 14 to 19 years old. You guys pay attention to that. That is important for stuff coming up. 
So in 1904, the current numbering system was established to identify cadet corps in their sequence of formation. So we're 2537, so we were the 2537th cadet corps to be formed. Um, the corps that I came from when I was younger was a consort, and it was uh, 3506. So we were quite a bit newer than you guys. Um, so in 1908, there was a cadre of commissioned officers, which was formed, which was comprised of school teachers, who the DND, Department of Militia and Defense, trained and paid to conduct drill and physical training and participate in schools. So this officer cadre was called the Cadet Services of Canada. So this was the beginning of our CIC officers, the ones that make, make the world go round and round. Um, so, and then we had the contributions of Lord Strathcona in 1910, Lord Strathcona, he was the Canadian High Commissioner to Britain, and he deposited a trust with the government of $500,000, bearing an interest of 4% to develop citizenship and patriotism in school cadets. So, almost 100 years, well, over 100 years later, um, is where he's still providing that, that trust is still providing equipment for cadet training and about fifty thousand dollars is distributed each year to the Strathcona Trust Committees. We will have a presentation on Lord Strathcona and his medals and his program at a later date. So, but we'll continue on with our history lesson here. So, on the impact of World War One, so the Army Cadet Organization it really came into came into its stride in the beginning of the 20th century. So about 40,000 former army cadets served in Canada's forces during World War I. So that was 1914 and 1918. And by the end of the war, there were about 64,000 cadets enrolled in car army cadet corps across Canada. So in, in 1928, the regulations for the cadet services kind of changed, changed our stride a little bit. Um, our focus. So we were to, they were to impart mental, moral, and physical training to cadets and seek to develop them in principles of patriotism and good citizenship. It recommended about cadet training, the exercises need not be of too rigid a military pattern. Discipline, individual, and collective is essential, and drill of an elementary character is to be encouraged. But gymnastic exercises, physical drill, signaling, scouting, swimming, dispatch riding, bridge building, map reading, and all forms of training that tend to produce physical fitness, mental and body, bodily alertness, individuality, go figure that one, self-reliance and resourcefulness in emergencies are to be regarded as of not less value than military drill, pure and simple. So when world... So, and we're going to cut that off there and we'll have another video about after World War One.